Hello everyone. It is Friday. I am starting another reading vlog. I'm not going to talk about books just yet because I actually have to run out the door. I just got off of work and I have a haircut appointment, which happens very rarely. Few and far between. Um, but I don't know how much I'm going to cut off. I was thinking about it actually a year ago at like this time my hair was almost all the way to my butt and then I cut off 11 inches in November and now it's I mean it's not that long but I'm just kind of over it and tr looking to do something new so we will see what I decide I usually just decide when I get there and sit in the chair um, I really hate getting my hair cut if you can't tell it's not it's not a fun activity for me but I will talk about books when I get home. I just wanted to start it now because I'm just so happy that it is Friday at 5 o'clock. I just can't even express how happy I am. But um, I'm going to run. I have to actually go right now. Um, and I will check in when I get home and talk about what I will be reading. Hello. We have chopped. It is really short and it feels super healthy. So all good things. Um, I also picked up All Swell by Mona Awad. It was where I get my hair cut. It's right next to a Barnes & Noble, so I just laundered in. Um, I loved Bunny by Mona Awad. It was one of my favorite books of 2020, so I'm very excited to read this. The blurb doesn't sound as intriguing to me, but I just love Mona Awad's style. Like, I think about Bunny all the time, and I think that's a book that you have to reread because I was so shocked by it and I just didn't like then thinking about it I'm like, oh yeah that makes sense but I didn't understand that book is like a very intense fever dream kind of a book so I hope that this has the same like weirdness and absolutely wacky bizarre plot that just makes sense even though it really shouldn't um, I am also reading I never read two books at the same time ever I don't think I've done that except in like a school context but I'm also have been reading Dune because of the reason everyone else is reading it and that is the movies coming out and I just want to be in the know um, I have heard people talk about this book that it is a challenging one to get into and that the dialogue is very forced and for me I'm not having a problem with the dialogue I'm just having well not the the format or the the vernacular in the dialogue I'm having a hard time with how much of it there is I don't love dialogue and it just feels like who who's talking kind of thing um it's just kind of throwing me but I think it's a book that you have to dedicate a good amount of time to to appreciate it like right now I'm just confused and there's a lot of terms that are being thrown out and I keep having to go to the back of the book and find the definition um so I think it's just a book that I have to kind of get my bearings and then I might appreciate it more because I know people really love it. I think I'm just a little bit thrown right now but if you don't know what Dune is about I don't either. It is about it's like a, a sci-fi written in the 70s. If that's wrong and I'm being an idiot. Ignore me. Um, but I think it was written in the 70s and it is getting or it's been adapted. Movies with Timothy Chalamet, Zendaya, right? That's why we're all reading it. Um, but it is about a few different like ruling families that live on different planets and there's this planet called Arrakis um, that has spice which is their equivalence in like our world of oil or this resource that if you control it you have a lot of money and that it affects everyone in the galaxy or I don't know the the solar system or whatever it is um, for them but um, there's a character Paul who is going with his father who's a duke to Arrakis and they're essentially going to colonize them with the permission of some overlord emperor character who is running the show behind the scenes and getting all the profits so I'm unsure of where it's going right now but really we're just learning about who Paul is his family all the different there's like this guild that controls everything. I don't know. I'm just confused and I think I'm butchering the description and I'm probably totally wrong because I think I'm just, I'm not there yet. I don't understand it myself so I can't tell you. But I will read you this blurb because that's easier for me. Okay. 
Miranda Fitch's life is a waking nightmare. The accident that ended her burgeoning acting career left her with excruciating chronic pain, a failed marriage, and a deepening dependence on painkillers. Now she's on the verge of losing her job as a college theater director. Determined to put on Shakespeare's All's Well That Ends Well, the play that promised and cost her everything, she faced the mutinous cast hellbent on staging Macbeth instead. Miranda sees her chance at redemption slip through her fingers. Riley wants it. Sounds like it. Okay. Um, um, that's when she meets three strange benefactors who have an eerie knowledge of Miranda's past and a tantalizing promise for her future. One where the show goes on, her rebellious students get what's coming to them, and the invisible... Riley! And the invisible... Doubt a pain that kept her from the spotlight is made known. Sounds very strange. I just loved Bunny so much, so that's really... He's plopped himself down. I think we're going to go. It is a Friday night, and I am basically doing this. But I have plans tomorrow and Sunday. So, guys, this is exciting for me. Oh, I just realized the face is pills. <laughs> That's so cool. That's actually a really awesome cover. It's a cool cover at first glance when you actually look at it and it's the whole theater mask, whatever it's called, is made of painkiller pills. I'm appreciating it way more. All right, I am gonna read this. I think I need a break from Dune. I clearly don't even know what it's about, but I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna keep persevering with a brief break and reading something that I'm confident that I will love because I think Mona Awad is just a weird and wacky wonderful woman. So that is the plan. I will catch in with you. Like it's doing a little flippy thing. What's happening here? Well, um, we're just going to hang and check in with you later guys. Not much is going on. Um, it has been quite honestly the longest week of my life. And I just am ready to do nothing and have no responsibilities. It's a very beautiful thing. Oh, I quit my job. Did I tell you? Not my job job. Did I not quit my job job? I quit my second job that I was working on the weekends, um, which I'm glad I did. But it's also, I really, really enjoyed it. Um, I mean, I didn't enjoy when like Saturday in mid afternoon, I had to go and like I couldn't make firm plans because it was right smack in the middle of the day and whatever. Um, but it was such a social job and I really loved everyone who worked there, so I am sad and I will really miss it. Um, but I think in terms of like my mental health and having my weekends after such a crazy like work week, um, now he wants out. See this? You're very annoying, Riley. Yes, you. Um, but I'm glad I did it. It is sad, but I think I just needed a break and a rest. And yeah. All right, guys, I'm talking about nothing. So I'll probably check in tomorrow. I'm not doing much of anything tonight. And Riley is staring at me. So I'm going to go. He wants out and he needs attention. My little, my little baby. All right. Goodbye. Hello, it is now Saturday. I had a very self-indulgent morning and got my nails done and my toes done. And I was thinking, I have not been in a nail salon or gotten my nails done since December, 2019. And I just forgot how to do it. And I was like socially awkward and not following the rules and was like looking at everyone for direction. It was just, <laughs> I just haven't done it in so long. Um, but I am all dressed up, which I haven't probably also been since December, 2019, who knows? Because I have a family party. So that is why I'm, I just love looking at them. I have started reading. I took the thing off. But I've started reading All's Well by Mona Awad. I am loving it so much and I'm so excited. It's such a relief when you like, because I loved Bunny so much. I had such high expectation. This is like a brand new release. I think it came out on the 3rd of August. Um, so I like snatched it right away. But it is really good so far. So we're following our main character, Amy. And she is a um, assistant professor at a university, and she also is running like the Shakespeare production theater program. And she is suffering from chronic pain that some, some like, mysterious 
incident happened where she fell off the stage during her career as an actress um, and that means she has a lot of resentment towards her students um, but she is also suffering and we are watching her kind of be in such agony and then also trying to deal with her students who are turning on her and they're trying to like co-opt and take over the program um, and basically like edge her out because she wants to put on the production that ended her career all's well that ends well and they want Macbeth which sounds like who cares but the writing of this is so fantastic Amy is such an interesting character and it really she's like very dark and brooding but she's really really suffering and she talks about all these different doctors that she's been sent to over the years like back and forth and back and forth and nobody's really helping her and we're watching her um we're like in her mind her inner dialogue of absolute agony and pain and then her almost like learning to silence herself because she is at these doctors and they're not helping slash making things way worse and she's just like in this cycle of like almost silencing herself because she's like well what's the point they can't help me but also being so desperate for help because right now is a specific moment where she's suffering more than normal um and she's talking about all these different people she comes in contact with her co-workers and they just don't understand her pain and the invisible pain and them telling her it's in her head so i think it's really interesting looking at somebody with chronic pain um and watching their experience so i'm really loving it but she's also like really hates the people around her she hates the students um maybe not hates them but she resents them and their youth and their agile and they can walk around and they don't have this pain that she has but also that they are still in like the prime of their lives in terms of their acting career um and it's just something strange is going on and you can kind of tell something's about to happen it's like bunny like it's a normal college campus atmosphere drama but i know because it's mona awad and what she did in bunny was so out there and wild and bizarre that i just know it's going to go the same way here and it can't just be a woman struggling even though that would be enough for me but i know that mona awad is going to make some strange bizarre things happen but i'm really really loving it i have just put dune on hold um i don't think my yes okay as i was saying dune is on hold i literally have read this much of it so i'm basically just going to probably restart it after finishing all well i just am not in the headspace we actually have to go my mom is rushing me out the door, so I will check in later. I have been reading All's Well. It is obviously a book. If you read Bunny, then you probably know and assume that anything by Mona Awad can very easily be spoiled um, because she always like packs a little bit of weirdness at the end to throw you off. And I'm not at the end yet, but there already are magical elements that are being... Um, kind of popped in every now and then and you know that it's going in that direction so basically our main character Amy who suffers from chronic pain she has essentially had her pain like weaponized and used against her um, to diminish her and like her career her relationships with her like friends um, her students feel like they can kind of talk over her or that they don't take her as seriously um, and her doctors do not believe her or don't take her seriously or kind of she feels like she can't actually explain her pain to them because they think they know what's going on in her body better than she does um so she has the opportunity to weaponize her pain against those people who have done it to her and i'm not going to say anything else but there are some weird magical elements and i'm enjoying the plot and the weirdness of it and I think Amy's a really awesome character to read about but I think the book is very repetitive and obviously Amy is somebody who lives kind of minute by minute hour by hour um, just hoping that she'll feel okay to kind of go about her life so it is like it, it makes sense that the writing style and her thoughts are very repetitive but it does make for a kind of boring um, there are a lot of moments when it's boring and that's just, I feel like I'm right now I'm in the thick of it and nothing, like a lot of things have happened and now we're kind of settling um, into her into her life and into her new life, but not a lot is happening right now. It's very, very repetitive and I'm a little bit bored, um, but I'm excited to see where it goes because I trust that she's going to do something amazing um, and I do think the plot's awesome, so we'll see where it goes, but I just wanted to check in. It's actually date night, so I am wearing 
jeans for the first time in a year and a half. Hello. It has been many days since I last filmed. I came down with a killer ear infection, like a toddler, and I have not been feeling great. Um, I went to the doctor on Monday and got antibiotics, but I actually think I need to go back again tonight after work because my jaw is like just very painful. But I want to wrap this vlog up. You are a little bit tippy, and I just I'm not gonna fix it. Um, I have finished All's Well by Mona Awad, and I have some thoughts. Let's start with the negative, get it over with. Like I mentioned before, it is way too long, unnecessarily long, and it's not even a big book, but I think it definitely goes a little bit stagnant in the middle. Um, it just didn't need all that, and like the extra page count is not necessary for Amy's character development. I think Mona Owa did a fantastic job at making her character and all the extra pages, basically in like the middle section where a lot of things have happened before and then we're waiting kind of for the next intense moments to strike. It was just excessive. Um, so I definitely think it could have been edited. And then the other part that I didn't love were the last few pages, like the ending, the very, very ending of the ending. Um, I just... It could have been more. I think the book had been picking up in intensity and getting really chaotic and claustrophobic and exciting. And then the last few pages, it just could have been more. Um, but this book could have gone in a million directions, so I can't really complain because I don't have an alternative. Um, that's just my take on it. But the positive, I really enjoyed reading this book. I think what Mona Awad does best is similar to what she did fantastically well in Bunny, um, her narration style, her characters, what she did in Bunny, how she made that book so claustrophobic and that fever dream thing that we all loved about it, um, is how she like changed the narration into that like group think, group speak mentality. Um, and in this one, we really get to know Amy, her tone, the way she sees the world, we're in her head, we really know the way she thinks and speaks. And then when something happens, um, her tone of voice, the way she speaks, her entire narration style changes so drastically. It was fantastically done. Um, she goes and becomes this like chaotic, fragmentary person who's bouncing all around, can't hold one thought pattern down for a significant period of time. And she is like losing touch with reality. And we don't know as readers what's real, what's hallucinations, what's in her head, who she's really talking to. And even when we're like, oh great, we're given like a little touch point of reality just to ground ourselves, then we even might get flipped on our head at that and we don't know if that's real. Um, but that whole section where she's a very different person, I thought that was so well done. That was like by far the best part. I really loved reading those, basically the, the whole second half of the book. Sorry, my card got full. I don't know if I'm moved. Um, but what I was saying, I think the way that her voice changes reading those moments can become almost like exhausting because there's so much happening but I think it's with good reason and I just loved those moments. I really enjoyed the process of reading this book even though it wasn't perfect for the reasons that I mentioned before but if you loved Bunny I think you will enjoy this kind of get through the middle section where things seem to slow down. I promise it will kick you in the ass very quickly. Um, I really enjoyed it. I gave it a four star. It is no Bunny. It can't be funny, right? But our expectations were so high that to follow up on that book that is so loved, I think, was tough. So I'm very happy with this, even though could have done with some editing. But please read this if you liked Benny. I think you will like it. What she does with the narration is so fun. Um, but I'm going to end this vlog here. I am going to the beach next week with my family. I'm going to be working from the beach, but um, like at night, in the mornings, on the weekends, I'm excited to be somewhere else and go on the beach, walk around, get some ice cream, play mini golf, all the things that one does. So thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe if you feel so inclined and I'll see you very soon in my next video. Bye everyone.